Have you ever wanted to know how to make a spectate system in Roblox Studio? Well, you found the right place. Let's get into the tutorial. The scripts will be in the description and let's get started. So let's start by making a part and this is where the player is going to be able to activate the proximity prompt to go into spectate mode. So I'm going to set the part size to 1,1,1. It doesn't matter, you can change the size to whatever you like. I'm going to make sure it's anchored and can glide off. You can rename this to whatever, I'll just call it spectate part. Then add a proximity prompt inside of it. The name of this also doesn't matter, I'll just name it spectate prompt. And then you can do all the settings here, hold duration, uh, and then just change action text to spectate. So that is it set up. Now we can add a script into the spectate prompt, and let's call this spectate script. The script will be in the description. So let's get started. So local replicator storage is equal to game get service replicator storage. And then next we have to create a remote event in replicator storage. Call this spectate event. And then let's make another variable for the spectate event. Wait for child spectate event. Now we need one for the prompt. So local spectate prompt is equal to script.parent. So now we need to detect whenever it's triggered using triggered. So spectate prompt dot triggered connect function. And then let's get the player that triggered it. And then now what we have to do is we have to fire the remote event for that player specifically. The spectate event, fire client, player. And then we're also going to send through the spectate prompt. There we go. That is the entire script done. We can close out of that. So now we have to make a GUI. So in start a GUI, click the plus button and add a screen GUI. Make sure reset on spawn is set to false and ignore GUI and set, oh, that doesn't matter, I'll just tick it anyway. The name of this doesn't matter, but I'm gonna call it spectate GUI. Next, we need to add a few things. So we're first gonna make two buttons left and right and then get rid of the text and using the keyboard, you can use the little arrow keys like that. So now I'm just going to customize this a little bit. All right, so the GUI is done. This is everything you need. So you need the back button. The back button is this one over on the left. And then the next button, which is the one over on the right using this one. And then we've got the X button to get out of spectate mode. And then we've got the player name label. Um, so this is the name of all of the elements. And for the player name, we can just get rid of this. doesn't matter. And now we can click on the GUI and untick enabled so it is hidden. Now we have to make a local script inside of the GUI. Name of this doesn't matter, but I'm going to call it spectate client and get rid of hello world. And now let's just copy the first two lines for the event. And then we can say spectate event dot on client event connect function. And what we are getting is the spectate prompt. We're not getting the player because the fire client chooses the player. You'll see if I click here, there we've got the player first. So the player does not get sent through. The player is just to use for whoever this event is getting sent to. So we use the spectate prompt and we're gonna enable false. Enabled is false. We don't want to do the enabled false on the server because then the prompt will be hidden for everyone else in the game and we don't want that. So we're just hiding it for the player only. And then we need another variable, local GUI is equal to script.parent. And then we're simply going to enable the GUI. So let's test so far what we have to see if it works. So we go up to it and now you can see the prompt is gone and we've got the GUI. Okay, so now let's start with the exit button. Let's make another variable for the exit button. GUI, wait for child, exit button. Then down here we can make another function. Uh, mouse button one click. And then what we're going to do is we're going to enable the GUI. I mean, sorry, disable the GUI. And then we want to turn, we want to enable the prompt again. 
So to do that, what we're going to do, we're going to make a variable called prompt. We're not going to assign it to anything. But then inside of the script, we're going to say prompt is equal to spectate prompt. So we're going to set the variable to that. Then let's first check if prompt is not nil. Then we're going to say prompt dot enabled is true. And then we're just going to set it to nil. So let's test if that works. So if we spectate and exit, there we go. And it is working. So now we have to make the player name label work and the buttons work. So let's get into that. Let's make two more variables. Oh, sorry, three more for the back button, next button and the player name label. So let's do the back button. Oops, back button. There we go. GUI, wait for child, back button. And local next button is equal to GUI, wait for child, next button. And then local player name label is equal to GUI wait for child player name label. Cool. So now let's do the back button. Back button dot mouse button one click connect function, and we'll leave a blank. And let's go next button dot mouse button one click connect function, and there we go. So now we can start coding inside of these. Okay. So before we start coding these, let's make a function so local function it's going to be called spectate player and this is what we're going to use to spectate the other players so in the brackets we need the player that's going to be spectating uh, let's actually make another variable for the camera workspace dot current camera then now we need to get the character so local character is equal to player dot character or player dot character added wait there we go and then we want to set the camera subject to the humanoid not the actual character so humanoid is equal to character wait for child then let's get the humanoid and then we're going to say camera dot camera subject is equal to the humanoid there we go okay and then next uh, i forgot something here in the spectate player function we need to set the player name label text to the player dot name. There we go. So next we need another function to get all the players names into a table. So let's make another variable called spectate table is equal to and then we're just going to set it to uh, empty table. Local function, we'll call it update spectate list. Oh, we need a name the spectate list. There we go. Then we're going to say for underscore comma player in pairs and then we need another variable for the players so local players is equal to game get service players then here we can say players get players and then we want to make sure that the player is not equal to our player then we need another function for the local player is equal to players dot local player so now if player not equal to local player then table dot insert spectate list comma and then the player there we go okay i forgot something we need to say in ipairs and then we also have to say spectate list is equal to and then reset the table after every update there we go now we need another variable for the current index is equal to zero so that is going to be the index of the player that we're on and then down in here we have to say if hashtag spectate list is greater than zero so there are players to be spectated then we could say current index is equal to one and then we can say spectate player we get the spectate list and then the current index of the player that we're on but if there are no players to spectate we need it else and then the player name label text is going to say no players to spectate there we go so now let's go back down to the back button and the next button functions so we want to say if hashtag spectate list is equal to zero then we want to return we don't want an empty list so if you press the button nothing's going to happen and then we need to say current index plus equal one and then we have to say if current index 
is equal to hashtag spectate list. Then we say the current index is equal to one. There we go, or equal one, there we go. And then we can copy this and we use the function down here again. So now let's go on to the next button. So we wanna copy this again to make sure that there's more than zero items in the spectate list. And then this time we want to minus one. There we go. And now we say if current index is less than one, then current index is equal to hashtag spectate list. There we go. Then we call this function again here at the end. Cool, so we're almost done. There's just a few more things. So we don't want our player to be able to walk around and jump when they're in spectate mode. So to fix that, we can say local local character is equal to player or local player dot character or local player dot character added weight. Then let's get the local humanoid. Humanoid is equal to the local character wait for child humanoid. Okay, now we have to get the original walk speed and the jump speed. So local, sorry, jump uh, height. Original walk speed is equal to local humanoid dot walk speed. And then let's do the same for the jump height. Original jump height. Uh, my game is using jump height, which is the default. But if you're using jump power, you can just change this to jump power. So local humanoid dot jump height. And then when they spectate, we want the uh, humanoid, so the local humanoid dot walk speed to be set to zero. And then let's do the same with jump height. There we go. And then once they exit it using the exit button, we want to say the local humanoid dot walk speed is equal to the original walk speed. And then the same for the jump height. There we go. And there's one more thing. So when we exit, we want to reset the player name label. So the player name label dot text is equal to blank. One last thing, when we exit, we want to make sure that the camera, the camera subject is back on our original humanoid. Okay, guys, I forgot one last thing. We need to update the spectator list whenever we call the, or well, whenever the spectator event gets fired. So now if we go and do a two people test, so here we are with the two people test. If we spectate, you can see it works. And now if player two walks around, you can see it works and we can look around and going back and forward. Oh, we got a problem. Okay guys, I found a problem. This needs to be greater than and not equal equal. So now if we test it for the last time, it should be working. So here with the two player test, and you can see if we press the buttons, nothing happens. And player two can run around and we can and you can see if I press W, S, and D or jump, nothing's happening. This player can still jump and walk. Now if we exit, now we can jump. And now if we switch, you can see the spectate button's still there for me. And now we're spectating each other. And yeah. So we both can't actually move at the moment because we're both spectating. So yeah, so now if we exit, there we go. Cool. So that is it for this video. Bye guys.